Hi everybody, Morgan with Event Answer here, and today I want to show you how to make this modern paper chain backdrop. Now I know what you're thinking. Morgan, we made paper chains as a kid and hung them up during the holidays. How am I going to put that up for an event? Well, I want to show you exactly how I did this and gave this a modern look for a spectacular event. Plus, it's super easy. It's just the same as making paper chains as a kid. So let me show you my planning process and how I got to this modern backdrop. To start off this project, I actually started by doing quite a bit of math because I wanted to figure out what size I wanted each link in the paper chain to be and what was the most economical way to use a sheet of paper. So after doing all that math, I decided that my links needed to be two inches wide and my final mural size would be about 48 inches or four feet wide and about four feet long as well. So in this design, I've got 24 columns of paper chains, and those are all going to be 30 links. Now, the links, even though they're two inches wide, don't actually hang two inches long. So on this piece of paper, it looks vertical, but the design ends up being a horizontal design. Now it's important to note that on a chain, only the odd number links are going to be seen because the even numbers are turned sideways. So as you're filling out your design, make sure you're using two of the same color as you go down so you can actually see it. Um, because otherwise if there's just one on a chain, it might not be seen if it's turned sideways. Once I had figured all of that out, I took to Pinterest to find some modern art inspiration. And once I found some colors and some ideas that I liked, I interpreted that into the graph paper. After I had figured out the entire design, I went back and numbered each section of color, and this helped me figure out how many strips of each colored paper I would need to get. For this project, I'm using 8.5 by 11 sheets of cardstock because I wanted something nice and firm that would hold its shape, and I figured out that I could get five two inch strips off of it and only have one inch left over and I thought that was kind of the most economical way to cut the piece of paper and that gave me an eight and a half inch long strip which made a nice size chain. Now you could go ahead and mark all these out and cut them by hand with a pair of scissors or a paper slicer but that's so much work to do especially knowing I had to cut 720 strips. And I found out that if I went to my local print shop, I could not only purchase my paper there cheaper than I could at the craft store, I could also have them cut it for me. So this is a paper guillotine and he stuck all of my cardstock in at one time and cut it exactly to two inch widths in a matter of minutes. This cost me about $10 to do and saved me hours of work. So I highly recommend if you can find someone who can cut this paper for you, do it because it is a huge time saver. It made it super precise and beautiful cuts, much better than I could have done with a pair of scissors. I took all the cardstock home and laid it out on my table and following the design that I'd made earlier, started picking up the same number and color of strips that coordinated to the design on the paper. Now I worked my way from the bottom of the chain up to the top and that way when I go to assemble these chains, I can start at the top of the paper pile and work my way down. On the topmost piece of paper, I put the number of the column that that chain was and then rubber banded it together so that they didn't get out of order. And this made paper chain assembly and organization really easy to follow. And then it was time to start assembling all the chains. So I took the first strip of paper off the top of the pile, the one with the number, and I overlapped it about a half an inch on each end and put a staple right in the center. Now you wanna make sure that number stays visible um, because that's gonna make assembly later a lot easier. So I just repeated this all the way down the pile of papers. And the important thing here is to be consistent. So make sure the edges line up, it's nice and square, all your staples are in the middle, and that'll give you your chain. My suggestion is get comfortable, put on your favorite show, and relax while you go ahead and assemble the rest of those chains. I love that this is a project you can really let your creativity run wild. I mean, this would be so fun to make an image or a logo out of chains or have this be super big. Like, can you imagine an eight by eight foot version of this hanging as a photo backdrop? So once you've got all the chains ready to go, I went ahead and laid them out on the floor in order to make sure that they were all correct and we're ready to start threading them. I'm using fishing line to string all of my chains together and hang them on the wall with. I've gone ahead and put a loop onto each end of my fishing line and it's already to the exact length I need to hang on the wall. So I'm just gonna string it through the top loop of each chain 
and then I will be ready to hang it. So here's my command hooks that I've already put on the wall to the correct distance apart. And I'm just gonna go ahead and lift that entire string up and hang it on those hooks. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get that first side hung up and then come around and support the center point and attach it to the other side. And then once I have it up, I'm gonna fiddle with it a little bit, make sure everything's straight, there isn't anything twisted and nothing is caught on the back side. And once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go back and turn and twist all of the chains so that no staple is in the front. I want all of the staples to be hidden. So I'm just gonna rotate those to the back or if it's a sideways chain, I'll rotate it down so that it's hidden by the chain below it. And that's all there is to putting this mural together. Now, if you didn't wanna hang it on the wall with command strips, you could always put this on a backdrop stand and it would work just as well. I hope you found today's video inspirational. It just goes to show you don't have to have a huge budget and complex ideas to make a truly wonderful event come to fruition. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. It lets me know that you're enjoying these kind of videos and finding it helpful. Also, if you've watched the video this far, you're obviously into planning events and parties. And I'm doing a Q&A video coming up in February and I would love to hear your questions. Leave any questions you have for me in the comments below or you can go over to the community tab and I've got a post over there that you can also leave a question on. I'll be gathering questions all throughout the month of January and then in February, I'll be releasing that Q&A video. So be sure to leave me a question and hopefully I'll answer yours. So until the next video, I'll see you later.